Hi, my name is Teresa, and I'm an international student from Malawi. And this is my co-presenter, Jamie, who's an international student from Malaysia. Recently, we were part of a competition called the Holt International Business Prize that brought together college students from around the world to come up with an innovative solution to food insecurity in urban slums. We're here today to present to you an exciting solution called aquaponics that we think could really solve this problem. Over a billion people are food insecure in the world today, and of that billion, 200 million are slum dwellers. Slums face extreme constraints. For instance, in the Kenyan slum of Kibera, 1.5 million people live in an area the size of Central Park. To gain access to water in Kibera, residents must pay about 10 to 12 times the price for water as those living in Nairobi. The life expectancy in Kibera is 30 years. That is 20 years below that of the rest of Kenya. So in the face of these constraints, Jamie and I thought to ourselves, how do we think of a solution that is both sustainable, replicable, and scalable? We also looked for inspiration from stories that are coming from uh, urban slums. And again, Kibera provided this inspiration. In 2008, the Kenyan government blocked off access to food to the urban slum. But what happened is women in Kibera took empty sacks, filled them with soil, and began to grow food from those sacks. This food was enough to at least feed their families, and some women were even innovative enough to sell this, this, this food to uh, roadside cafes and made some money off of it. So to Jamie and I, we said, have we seen this in our communities? And yes, we have. Uh, Jamie in Southeast Asia and I in Southern Africa, we see this continual theme of slum dwellers as extremely entrepreneurial people. What if we could find a technology that was able to help them continue to leverage these resources, but also provide them with food that is nutritious, reliable, and affordable? So what we learned from the women in Kibera was that any solution that we came up with to resolve the problem of food insecurity in urban slums needed to be able to address the very serious limitations of land, water, and soil. But that also meant that we needed to be able to defy and think about ways to defy existing assumptions and understandings about agriculture. How do we do that? Well, let's try a little experiment. When we, what, do we think, what do we think we need when we think about agriculture? Generally, we think we need some sort of land, space. We need water, clean water especially. And, but we also need fertilizer, or at least some kind of fertilized soil. But that poses, poses a very serious problem for urban slums, because they don't have access to clean water or even constant access to water. And they don't have acres and acres of land that they can devote to agriculture. So for Teresa and I, we thought, what if you didn't need any of this? What if you could have soilless agriculture? What if you could have agriculture that was both water efficient, space efficient, but at the same time produced food sustainably and with very few inputs? That innovation is aquaponics. And the concept is fairly simple. You can grow um, vegetables, fruits, or herbs in the upper system in growing beds made out of pebbles or sponges that have water running through or under them. This water is fertilized by fish fecal matter from the, from the bottom system, which can be pumped throughout the entire unit using gravity pumps. And you can see from this sort of model that this system is space efficient, it's simple to use, but it's also, <clears throat> sorry, but it's also self-sustaining and closed. This is where aquaponics becomes a truly disruptive piece of innovation. It's this sort of disruption that we need in urban slums, because the existing food distribution system in the world has failed them. And if we continue on our current trajectory, we're only setting ourselves up for more failure. But perhaps you're wondering, why aquaponics? Why not something else? 
For Teresa and I, what was most important about aquaponics was that we could see this system in our home communities, back in whether it's Malaysia, Malawi, or Mozambique, or Thailand. We could see it being implemented because we knew that you could build it literally anywhere. The materials you needed could be sourced from any part of the world. It was space efficient. And if you really, really wanted to, you could scale up. And this is an example of how it's been scaled up. But then again, we thought, well, technology without humanity will not create social change. So instead, we turn to a different model. We turn to people-centered agriculture and look at how you could use aquaponics to create ripples that can turn into waves and can turn into tsunamis for social change using three very simple words. Employ, empower, and educate. The ripple begins with the installation and the implementation of an aquaponics unit in an urban slum community. This is fairly simple. Like I said, you could source materials anywhere. But, very, but more, more importantly, by employing local resources within that community, you're ensuring that urban slum communities take the first step towards change and towards a better life. But that ripple doesn't just stop there. It turns into a wave when urban slum communities are able to see the fruits of their labor. Produce and fish from an aquaponics unit can be harvested for subsistence or can be sold for profit. But this sort of sale and this sort of sale empowers urban slum community, communities to be able to pursue a better life. And finally, this wave turns into a tsunami when urban slum communities are actively engaged in the production and reproduction of knowledge regarding the aquaponics system. <clears throat> Sorry. Active engagement and maintenance of the unit by a particular community provide, gives them a vested interest in education. And education, we all know in this room, is the most direct means to achieving social change. These triumvirate of factors are what we think is needed to be able to make aquaponics a true galvanizer of social change and a true solution to food insecurity in urban slums. But then, so we thought about how fantastic this new model would be, right? Combining technology with people-centered agriculture. But then the question is, why do we need people in the first place? Why couldn't we just implement this technology in an urban slum, have some experts and some machines run it, and be done with it? Just like how everybody else does it. But the thing is, we don't want to be like everybody else. Because we know that what everybody else is doing just isn't as effective. And we can do better. Growing up in Southern Africa, I bore witness to a lot of food initiatives trying to aid food insecurity in the region. And mostly what happened is that food was delivered into communities. And that's exactly it. It was delivered into the communities. Where were the people in this question? A story that really stood out to Jamie and I is in 2008, I was part of an initiative in Swaziland that delivered food to rural communities. But what happened is that boxes were dropped off every morning, every morning to these communities. One day, people gathered around to open a box, and there were gallons of peanut oil in the box. But no one knew what it was. So what ended up happening is that the community drank the peanut oil. To Jamie and I, this said, people need to be the center of any food intervention, and aquaponics provides this opportunity. But you also heard Jamie talk about how aquaponics can create, can create ripples uh, and that turn into tsunamis. Aquaponics can also create ripples that bring along pleasant surprises. My favorite story comes out of Accra in Ghana, where an NGO set up an aquaponics unit. And initially, the community was pretty reluctant to accept the unit, but they found out that six months into the operation of the, of the um, aquaponics unit, the incidence of malaria actually decreased. When research was done, it was found that the fish in the aquaponics unit were actually eating the mosquitoes. We believe that wherever implemented, 
aquaponics can continue to deliver pleasant surprises. So you've heard about what we think is the world's most pressing problem. And you've also heard about what we think is the best solution. But perhaps the question on your mind is, why should I care? Well, more importantly, actually, why do we care? We care, I think we care because we have to. We care because problems of food insecurity aren't problems for far-flung tropical nations that you never see. Food insecurity issues happen in the backyards of our homes in South Af Southern Africa and Southeast Asia. We care because second to water and oxygen, food is the one other thing you cannot live without. So to us, aquaponics is the solution to the food insecurity problems in urban slums. But that's not all it is to us. For us, food, for us aquaponics poses a very, very real solution to the problems that will face the city, cities of the future. In face of increasing urbanization, increasing urbanization and concentration of populations, we're looking at aquaponics as the solution to food insecurity issues that will soon plague the grand metropolises of our future and the cities that we'll, we will soon be living in. Thank you very much.